Hello everybody, my name is Bahan and I'm here to show you how to maximize your workflow with Keyboard Maestro. This episode, I'll be talking about actions. Now, I'm not gonna be talking about all the actions because then this will be a really long video. Instead, I'm gonna talk about my favorites. And if you find that I haven't addressed something that you like, you know, just search for it. So if you wanna open something, just search for open. If you wanna do something with your applications, just search for applications. And if you find that you're using an, or an action over and over, just drag and drop into your favorites category and it will populate there. All right, let me delete this and let's get started. So I have moved these actions into this macro here to make it easier for me to explain and easier for you to learn. The first set is our recorded set and the things that get recorded when you use the record mode and that is our type of keystroke and move and click mouse. Our uh, type of keystroke action is pretty simple, you know, Sit, click here and then update it to whatever you like. And then you have your move and click. And I feel that it's easiest just to use the record mode to record the, the position. And then you can adjust the options here if necessary. So you just move a click or double click, left or right buttons with modifiers and without, with or without dragging. And you can restore the mouse location after that. Really nice. Our next set is our pause actions. And these are our most important actions because when you're making macros, the first thing you do is one, use the record mode. Two, you double check to make sure all the steps are there because sometimes Keyboard Maestro likes to combine keystrokes into um, the insert text action. And you have to double check that's it's not doing that. And I mean, not doing it when you don't want it to. And then after that, the third thing you do, you do is you test it. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And if it doesn't work, the reason is because of the pauses, because of timing issues. And this is where you wanna use the pause action. You wanna find where the computer is, where the computer is skipping steps and then you add pauses. And usually a 0.3 seconds Pause is good enough. And then um, when you're switching between applications, you can use the pause until conditions met. And you use you know, all the following true, this application, whatever application you're using is in front. A really nice little action there. Next is our variables. Now, the first thing I do every morning is I sit down, I sign in, and then I hit F6, and it populates my variable input because this is where all my variables are updated for my all my for my all of my other macros, you know, to reference. And what do I do with my my um, my variables? In most cases, I'm just inserting them in by pasting or texting. Whatever text field I have selected, it will just insert it there. Now, next one is our organized set. First action is our comment action here. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a little, little comment here. It doesn't really do anything, but it'll be in your, you know, your your actions here, and you can disable it right here. You can disable it so that makes it easier to, to see. All right, and then you have your repeat action here. So when you have like using a, the tab, using tab or the arrow key to get to a text field and there's like 10 of them, just drag the keystroke in and then repeat it 10 times. Or you can organize your action into little little segments, you know, you can make boom. So this segment is, you know, things that I've already said, you know, totally awesome. And just use one and then it will totally work. Beautiful. Next is our control flow. So as you're making more and more macros and you have your, you, you want to connect your little macros together, you can use the execute a macro. So you can use and tell you tell your computer to do this small little thing and then give it an alert for you to do a manual process. You can either stop it and hit continue once you're done and then you continue to do the other macro and execute whatever other macro you want. And then you can, once you're done with everything, you can use the notification action to notify you, to notify you that boom, you did something. And then lastly is our if 
if then else, which is really awesome is where you can start using your prompt for user input. So you can use the variable, uh, let me see, the variable condition here, whatever variable condition is just, so if it's day one, if it's the first day of my project, if the say is, it will do this set of actions. If not, it'll do a different set of actions. And those are my favorite actions. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.